Welcome to the Heavy Briefings Podcast. We are Josh Runquist and the Metal Fairy. A fun-loving metal couple that brings you the best in new music. What did you just make me listen to? As well as movies. Three hours later, nothing of value was added. TV. It's going good, so why not cancel it? Video games. Here's an idea. Remake the game, but make it worse. Wrestling. Why are we still watching this week after week? And all things entertainment. I knew it. I knew she was behind Black Eyed Games. And a little insights into our personal lives. You don't mind that I trauma dump on you, do you? Uh, emotional support girlfriend, party one. He's a handsome fella. I know, you keep telling me. We're made for each other, because no one else would have us. Enjoy the show. Hello everyone, this is Josh Ronquist here for the Heavy Debriefings Podcast. A hawk tour to you all. <laughs> and that laugh, of course, comes from the one and only... The Metal Fairy. And how are you doing today? Oh, I am A-OK. It is Friday, we are going to game the weekend away, and we're doing the show now. Yeah, you got done with work early. I did. I don't want to work. I just, just want to bang, bang on, on the, the drum, drum all day. day. Yeah, and uh, speaking of banging on the drum, we got a banger of a show this week. As the kids <laughs> would say. Or the kids used to say. Um, <laughs> we got a lot of news to cover, a lot of brand new singles to cover. Um, one full week with the Nintendo Switch on my end. Yes, yes. And so, so much more. And did the Metal Fairy like or hate or think Porcupine Tree is okay? We'll get to that in Accountability 101. Stay tuned. But first, we got to talk about our past week. Yeah. And uh, what's been going on in our past week? Yeah, I mean, on my end, it's been a kind of a lot of the same old, same old. I've still been on my Skyrim kick, as always. Uh, well, it's not really a kick if you never leave it. It's more of an addiction or well, just of who you are fine. at this point. I mean, we didn't need to go that far, but yeah, you're you're right, you're right. Um, so one thing I did do recently in this playthrough that I haven't really done in my other playthroughs is I moved to Golden Glow Estate. Golden, I forget what it is, um, Golden something a state where like you have I mean you, there, there's a few different buildings in there um, that you can live in where you can have like a garden and stuff but this one's like a bigger homestead where you have like a couple different gardens and you can have like actual like gardeners and you have somebody kind of running your house and stuff and you make money off of the, the house you live on and uh, I thought it was kind of cool to move there because if you play the game or have ever played the game you know you can like cook in there as well you can also make like potions and stuff like that so you have to get ingredients and stuff like that and one of the ingredients that is terribly hard to come by is butter <laughs> and I just thought you had to like happen to come by it by like store owners selling it or just looting it off of people but little did I know this home has an actual butter churner in it <laughs> so you have a cow on the farm they get milk from the cow and then you can turn it into butter and that's super exciting for a nerd like me who likes to cook in this game um so I, I got all excited I got this place all all set up with my stuff and then I moved my husband there um and then I'm like okay you know what I'm gonna adopt a couple children so I adopt the children and then I find out that there is of course a Bethesda glitch where you cannot have your children live at this house even though you have a room for them you have two beds for them and everything you can't have your kids at this house so now my kids and my husband are living in solitude in this house that has solitude as a city by the way not complete like just solitude by themselves but um they're living there and and they're in a house that doesn't have any of my belongings, so now I'm trying to figure out what I want to do. Um, yeah, that sounds like Skyrim in a nutshell. Basically, basically. And then, of course, I played the new episode of Love Island, the game, uh, on my phone as well this week. You'll never learn. No, I won't. I won't. Um, so this week, I um, thought I was going to be going on a date with the person I am um, partnered up with, but instead we each had to go on dates with new people coming in, which were actually old people from other their seasons um well his person was anyways my per my people were uh completely new people again which again is stupid since it's supposed to be an all-star show um but the person i brought in is kind of a looker so at least there's that so we'll see where it goes how about you uh i've spent a majority of the week um playing on the switch yeah you have yeah um i, can attest I, to that. I blazed through <laughs> uh super mario odyssey which i find mm -hmm. to be a very very fun game yeah and of course everyone out there is like well yeah it was really fun seven years ago when it came out <laughs> And I'm like, hey, I just got a Switch last week. Right. Um, yeah, I'm just learning that now and really getting into it. Yeah. I, I mean, I did get to play it a little bit four years ago when you got your Switch. But yeah. as I mentioned on the show last week, I feel really awkward about playing uh, someone else's stuff. Right. And I would rather right. just have my own. I so it. I thought I was never going to go back to this. Yeah. But um, <laughs> thank you to switching internet plans. We got a Nintendo Switch for free. We did. We did. And we got confirmation that potentially even 
tomorrow we'll be getting a Chromebook. Yes, yes. Which uh, will become the official Heavy Debriefings Chromebook. Yeah. Which we'll be using for notes and all that kind of stuff. Pretty much, pretty much. Since that's about all you can really do with a Chromebook. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so we'll be using it for that. Oh. We could have went with a $200 gift card to Targets, and arguably we should have. But a Chromebook is a Chromebook, and exactly. I, I think that's much cooler. It is, it is. Um, I also did an interview earlier in the week uh, with a band known as Forgotten Shrine. Mm -hmm. This is a duo project uh, from the East Coast yeah. um, of the uh, Pennsylvania and Maryland persuasion. Mm -hmm. uh, this is, uh, they only have one song right now, but it is very much based in folk metal and power mm -hmm. metal, hard rock and symphonic. Um, what did you think of the song that they put out? I liked it. I mean, it definitely has a hint of LVT to it, I feel like. I mean, which, you know, obviously the hurdy yurdy is going to remind you of that if you're near folk metal. But even beyond that, I, I think they have a hint of that sound to them, which I love. Um, I love folk metal, so they have a good sound to them. I like what they're doing. I do too, and I'm very, very curious what they're going to be doing in the future. And if uh, you like Americanized uh, folk metal, power metal, symphonic metal, and hard rock, uh, you should check out that interview and uh, check out their first single, Where Shadows Lie. Mm -hmm. um, I'm very curious. Again, where it seems to be going from here. Yeah. Um, I potentially have two more interviews coming up this coming week, if everything goes right. Mm -hmm. um, on the uh, health side, I've gone from two chiropractor appointments a week to one now. Yeah. So I think things are going in the right direction. Mm -hmm. uh, once at, at least scary on my end. Um, maybe it's not so bad, but it sounded really scary to me. Yeah. Um, I, I woke up yesterday and I was like, hey, we need to go to the chiropractor today. Yeah. Uh, let's not save it for tomorrow. Right. So went in and uh, my uh, lower back tailbone area was hurting and the chiropractor said that, uh, oh, your uh, tailbone rotated. Yeah. I, I don't think anything in your <laughs> spine region is supposed to <laughs> rotate. <laughs> So, you know, <laughs> hearing something like that is a, a wee bit scary. And I, I get that. I will say, though, as, like, the, the party that was just on standby over there, he didn't seem, like, bothered or shocked or anything. So I th Well, when you're a doctor and a chiropractor, like, what would shock you? Well, that, that is true. But, I mean, I guess what I'm getting to is it seemed like this was something he sees, you know, fairly often. So even though it sounds terrible, <laughs> I'm sure it's a lot more common than we think. <laughs> or so we would like to believe. Exactly, exactly. Well, it's come a long way from him saying that he's no miracle worker, but he's going to try to fix my he back. He hasn't said that in a couple weeks now. Yeah, so... <laughs> That's a good thing. I I'm assuming things are going in the right direction. Yeah. Or at least I hope. Yeah. Or maybe it's just a ploy to get my money. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, I do feel better. Yeah. Um, Every time he gets some cracks and crunches out of me, it, mm -hmm. it really does work. Yeah. And I've noticed that I'm not in constant pain 24-7. Which is a change. Which is a change. But anytime that I am hurting it feels like it's bothering me more mm -hmm. because I'm not used to it now. Exactly. So when I do feel something in my lower back or my neck or something like that, it, 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 it hits me a little harder. Well, yeah, you know what relief feels like now. So the pain is going to be like, oh, there you are. Mm. <laughs> But I, I do see you walking straighter and standing up taller and stuff and better posture a lot of the time. So, yeah, I think it's in the right direction. You say that, but I feel like I'm currently walking on stilts right now as yeah. my right foot is wearing a medical boot mm -hmm. and my left foot is wearing a... Uh, like uh, what? what's the term again I forget what it's called it's like a shoe lift kind yeah, of thing yeah a shoe lift which is supposed to match the size of the medical boot mm -hmm. but to me it, it, it feels like I'm walking on stilts yeah and so I constantly feel like I'm gonna tip over yeah and I get that but at home when you're not wearing these things though that's when I can definitely see it you know and th that's the majority of when I see you walking around so uh, and speaking of uh, walking around and doing stuff um, back on Wednesday we uh, took a little uh, venture mm -hmm. out did we did we did and uh, we got a couple, only a couple things this time. This yeah. is probably the least amount we've ever spent at a comic book show. Yeah, it is. <laughs> and I mean ever. Um, <laughs> one of them, um, I, I've never seen this before, but they had it uh, right pretty much front and center as we were walking into the, the shop. Mm -hmm. It was a plush of Nibbler from Futurama. Yes. And he's got his little cape and his diaper and <laughs> all the cute little stuff that it's was going on there. Eye antenna. They, they also had a baby bender and... And Zoidberg as well. They were cute as well. Uh, if there wasn't a Nibbler, I would have went with Bender. Yeah. But uh, there was no way I could say no to Nibbler. I mean, he just looks so I, cute and stuff. He, I had to. Yeah. Well, he is a do 
adorable and like you never see nibbler things out and about and i mean i know the show was off for a while and just came back again um and uh, the new season starts next month oh yes um but you never see nibbler merchandise or i don't anyways so it was really cool to you although then again we aren't really we haven't really looked for it much i mean i did find a future uh, a couple of futurama comics yeah uh, several mm-hmm. months back that is true that and is then true. Uh, i haven't ever seen the toys uh, of course uh, the the video game that came out back when it was back on fox i know that game's like 200 300 dollars right now so that's probably never gonna happen <laughs> no uh, unless i emulate it but uh yeah, yeah i i still have a, a big soft spot for the early day fox run of futurama and of yeah. course nibbler was a very pivotal part of that of back. course and of course um you're vaguely familiar with futurama you know who yeah. nibbler was but oh yeah i had you watch a little compilation video mm-hmm. when yesterday on nibbler so you yeah. know a little bit more on him so uh, what do you think it, it was good learning a little bit more about his people and that there's an entire planet of people of him that, that he comes from because i i didn't the didn't know that <laughs> i didn't know that part before but they're all adorable it's funny that they think they're like serious little guys because they're they're just squishy little cuties <laughs> <laughs> but yeah i love nibbler i mean even though i i'm not always a huge fan of uh the show although i mean some parts are fine but yeah nibbler will always be a a a good good um little guy for me see to me i think futurama could be like king of the hill in the fact that i think you'll appreciate the early day futurama stuff and then you'll be very bitter by the end of it and i have seen like episodes of the earlier stuff and it was fine it was fine you can always go back that's what you did with king of the hill remember yeah but king of the hill i never watched well you avoided it like plague i did Mm -hmm. and now it's the only thing we can fall asleep to i know (laughs) well the only thing you'll let us fall asleep to for the most part yeah <laughs> um also um if you want to call me wimpy go ahead i don't care but um we did pick up a comic <laughs> we did um back from the early 70s a mm-hmm. uh, comic as well i think it was 1972 yeah it was winnie the pooh yes and um before anyone gives any crap on this uh, just think of it this way we got it for about five bucks yeah i uh, look on ebay it's going from anywhere from 50 to 75 dollars right now so if yeah. you want to turn around and exactly. sell it we made some good <laughs> made a good chunk of change that is true that's only going to go up in price because uh, I'm not taking it out of the seal or anything and mm-hmm. and unless the Winnie the Pooh stock just plummets all the way to the ground I, I think it's a nice little nest egg and I grew up with Winnie the Pooh so pfft, on you well, I guess it depends on if they put out any more Winnie the Pooh horror movies <laughs> We haven't seen the last one yet, but... Well, is there any word on when the second one's coming to Peacock? I haven't heard anything, but I'll I'll look into it. I'll look into it. Yeah, I didn't realize it was only in theaters for one day in our area. I know, I know. Uh, had I known that, that might have been the day we would have went to go see it, because right. like, I feel like I just need that kind of closure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, the first one ends on such a terrible, <laughs> terrible cliffhanger. Oof, yeah. But, um, yeah, I, I think that pretty much covers all the stuff in our past week, right? Uh, we we got a couple more things. Oh, okay. Um, first, we did watch a little GCW last weekend. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, they had uh, three shows in a row from Friday to Sunday. They did. They should stop doing that. They very much should. It is too much. Uh, maybe it's just us being bitter. Yeah, that could maybe. be. That could be. But, like, if you're putting on, like, a three-hour show three days in a row, it, it gets to be too much. It does. I mean... <laughs> Like, some of them almost went four hours. Yeah. And that's just too much to catch up on. Yeah. And, well, and the thing is, like, even though GCW has, like, different people coming in at different events, typically, like, for one weekend's events, it seems to be kind of the same people every night, too. So it just gets... Different to be a, matches. Different matches, but it does get to be a little repetitive in some ways. Yeah. Yeah. But um, I still prefer it over what's going on in the big leagues. Oh, 100%. 100%. <laughs> and then finally... Oh, and speaking of that, did you, yeah. did you see the rumor that shane mcmahon tried to join aew i saw a rumor that he did reach out to somebody to like you know find out info and stuff essentially and uh, tony khan came out this morning and said uh, that never happened see i didn't i didn't see that he reached out to tony i heard that he reached i can't remember who he reached out to but somebody else so you never know if that happened i mean that could have but i'm just going off of his words yeah yeah well of course tony's gonna shoot anything down because if he did talk to shane mcmahon and was trying to work him in he certainly want people to, wouldn't want people to know ahead of time exactly 
podcast. So, um, and finally, yeah, uh, we last night we watched the new episode of The Boys. And what did you think of it? It was gory and crazy and dark and perfect. Yeah, it was probably the <laughs> darkest episode of of The Boys in general. Yeah, yeah. Uh, mm. I, and um, there's a lot of dark episodes. Mm-hmm. You can make the argument that every single episode is dark in some way, shape, or form. But, yeah, um, oh, that's true. This was a notch above the rest. <laughs> It really was. But, um, <laughs> you know, before we put it on, I was saying that I didn't really feel like watching a documentary tonight. Yeah. But, uh, you know, The Boys is an exception. It is an exception. Uh, it, it's too it's too realistic to what's going on in the world. And it really is. Obviously, there's things that are not happening. Right. But there's things that they're touching on that are way too close to home. Yeah. It, it, I mean, it's not a perfect one for one, but it's a one compared to a 1.5, you know? It's pretty similar. It's pretty similar. And uh, we got... F- Four more episodes, which uh, really sucks. I mean, you kind of wish that they were all lumped together mm-hmm. or they were equally spaced out. But yeah. no, we're already done. We're already at the halfway point. That's ridiculous. We got four more episodes. It's ridiculous. It is ridiculous. <laughs> but I'm also very excited as well. Me too. All right. And now that we got done talking about our past week, how about we hawk to through some news? <laughs> Let's do it. So up first, hold on to your wigs, everybody. Kid Rock, Jason L.D. Big and Rich and Travis Tritt are launching a summer tour throughout America in support of freedom. Of course, they announced this. And all this, I can say is it's about beeping time. Right? Of course, they announced this on Tucker Carlson's brand new show, The Tucker Carlson Encounter. Um, and can, I, I don't think Tucker Carlson should be using a word like encounter. No, he really but, um, shouldn't. Um, Kid Rock said about this, we're going to do seven festivals. Uh, it's called Rock the Country. I I see a need for a big portion of this country that's under underserved entertainment wise and that's pretty prevalent when you see the success of shows like Yellowstone and Duck Dynasty. People are just starving for it. So we want to go out and give hardworking people that love this country mu- country a music festival. Something for them. Come show your patriotism um, just like they do at my shows but it, it, uh, with a force of people. We got different lineups in seven small towns. A few of those towns are Ocala, Ocala, Florida, uh, Mobile, Alabama, Rome, Georgia. Um, so it's kind of all in the all same south. centralized yeah. southeast. Yep. Um, he goes on, rock and roll's not been too kind to them. We're trying to provide something for these smaller towns where we have a lot more freedom to do things that we might not be able to do in bigger cities, and especially to work with the local people there, whether it could be police, firefighters, city councils, whatever. Um, yeah. So come on down with your white heads down to rock the country. <laughs> right? I mean, it, it, it that is exactly what it is. Yeah. Um. So I take it we're not taking a road trip of this no 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 but you love all of them oh yeah i'm a huge fan girl (laughs) all right well i guess i'll have to do something else for your birthday then (laughs) uh no um that sounds like it absolutely sucks and i am so happy it's coming nowhere near us i mean it it wouldn't do well here let's be honest i mean maybe y'all in like the boonies but like it's such a like pandering to the lowest common denominator literally literally yes well i remember back in 2016 when kid rock was uh all all for voting for trump and yeah uh, he was doing a tour where he and he mentioned he was only gonna play uh red states from now on (laughs) and every state that's a blue state he referred to as dumb f is stan oh okay okay and he even had shirts with it jeez (sighs) I love how so many of the people, too, like to pretend like they're from a small town and they're just one of those people. Like, no, you're from a rich family from a rich neighborhood or a city and no. Well, don't forget, Kid Rock was never poor. Exactly. His, his dad owned like a major chain of, uh, I, I think it was like used cars or just like a different kind yeah, of cars. something like that. Like, yeah. um, like a, yeah, all, like huge dealerships across the Detroit area. He was mm-hmm. never poor. No, He's not just at pandering all. to the poor. 100%. 
<sighs> Moving on to some other wonderful Hollywood news. Ooh. Justin Timberlake has been arrested with a DWI. Well, I think Hollywood's a bit of a stretch. It's more music news. Well, music news. I mean, okay. yes, he's been in movies. He's acted in movies. Sure. But, uh... Yeah. Um, when he was arrested, uh, <laughs> uh, he had muttered under his breath, you know, this is going to ruin the tour because he has an upcoming tour coming what up. What tour? Um, well, that is exactly what the officer said because he did not recognize Justin Timberlake. And Justin then said, oh, the world tour. <laughs> and uh, yes, you have just heard the uh, name of the episode 50 here of the Heavy Debriefings podcast. Uh, yes. This is going to ruin the podcast tour. It is. It really is. But yeah, I, I mean, oh, Justin's had a year, hasn't he? he? I mean, a lot of stuff came out about uh, his past relationship with Britney. Um, yeah. Oof. And uh, allegedly, a, a lot of people are uh, talking about the suspicion about how he had cocaine eyes when uh, looking at his mugshot. I mean, they were. They it, were it didn't on look like he was just drunk. Yeah, he, I mean, he had seen some stuff that night. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and all I can think of is all the stuff that he did to Britney back 20 some years ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And is he going to face any of the same repercussions? Is he going to be put under a conservative ship? Is Jessica Biel going to be <laughs> watching over his will now? Like, she already does. <laughs> Let's be honest. <laughs> I mean, there's there's so many heinous things that uh, he apparently did, according to Britney's book, and yeah. other things that people have come out with. Mm -hmm. um, I never heard him deny any of these things either, which is the really messed up part. Yeah, he's just kind of remained silent during all of it. Maybe that's a smarter way to go. I, I, yeah. I don't know. But then mm -hmm. something like this comes up, and uh, he's back in the news again. I know. So is his tour ruined? <sighs> I, th I think you should just call it the dirtier pop tour and, uh, <laughs> you know, just embrace that he's a little dirtier. He drinks. He might do illegal substances. He's a he's the he was the real bad boy of NSYNC. Well, yeah. I mean, I think his solo music has already kind of painted that image. But and of course, least we forget the latest Smurfs movie had NSYNC featuring t <laughs> Justin Timberlake. Not NSYNC. <laughs> Not all of them combined. No. Apparently no. just four of them are known as NSYNC and and then features Justin Timberlake. Exactly. Never forget. Exactly. Never forget. <laughs> what else we got? Yeah. So Twilight Forest has announced that Lind, Bourne, Aaron Deer have all three left the band. So this only leaves three members left. The, yeah. Half the band yeah. have quit. So the singer, the drummer, and the keyboardist, keyboardist are mm -hmm. still in the band. But yeah. But they put out a message, of course, in their kind of lore talk. Folklore. Yes. Um, they are continuing on. It does sound like they're bringing on new members. Nothing announced yet with who or anything like that but yeah it sounds like this was planned for a while and it sounds like they already yeah. have people in the backup for uh, getting the lineup filled up it does it does uh, i mean it, it's sad because i i'm a huge fan of them and you know it always makes you wonder like will the sound change at all or like what kind of impact this will have but i'm glad they're at least continuing on as long as blackwall's in the band i don't see how the music's going to change since he pretty much writes everything yeah that's true uh he writes everything on the keyboard and then everyone else does their thing around it yeah and of course sense. he is the wizard of the band so he has <laughs> control of everything but um yeah i'm still really bummed about it but um i'm it, it, it seems like twilight force can't keep a, a solid group together it, it has been a little bit of but then again it. also remember they have six members of the band well that is true it is hard enough to keep a band going yeah. let alone a six piece band well and also when they're all mythical characters they all have other lives they have to lead whether it's in the forest or up in the you know mountains and stuff exactly some of them might have been banished some of them might have been killed exactly. some exactly who knows what happened exactly and i'm sure we'll hear what's I, happened he'll come out eventually he'll come out eventually uh and another band breakup north tale is coming to an end yeah i'm very disappointed about this uh bill hudson uh, the creator and uh basically did almost everything in north tale came mm -hmm. out with a little two-minute video uh talking about how north tale was basically his solo project yeah and it's breaking up because because of the music industry, he was sick of dealing with labels. He was sick of dealing with uh, everyone on the business side of the music side. And he just wants to be a hired gun to play in different bands, which he's doing yeah. right now. He's playing with Doro. He's playing with I Am Morbid, which is uh, the offshoot of Morbid Angel. Mm. Uh, he's doing a lot of different hired guns. Uh, he does Trans-Siberian Orchestra in, in the holiday season. Um, there's a lot of stuff that he does. And I can understand just wanting to play literally just wanting 
trying to play and yeah. not have to worry about doing the other stuff. Yeah. But at the same point, I feel really sad because I loved both albums mm -hmm. and apparently he didn't even want to put out the second album. He, he was oh. already sick of everything by then. I thought the yeah. second album was better. But uh, yeah, that, that really sucks. And um, I, hopefully Bill just continues on doing what he wants to do. Yeah. No, I'm definitely sad about it. Both albums were in my top fives of those years and or top tens, I think. Yeah, at least. top tens. Um, but I get it. I mean, especially if you're trying to actually make a living in the music industry, like when you're kind of having to deal with everything yourself and stuff, it's hard to make a living. Whereas when you are just kind of a hired on, you know, performer, it's a lot. I won't, I won't say it's easier, but you can make more money that way, depending on who you're hired by. And it's less stress and less. Well, you know, that pays for itself when you don't have to deal with as much stress. I absolutely. Mean, absolutely. That's tax free. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So I, I totally understand it, but I am super sad to see North Hill come to a close because I love the music. Me too. And of course, Bill's doing exactly what I wanted to do growing up. I just wanted to be a session drummer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I either wanted to be in the studio and record the parts, or I just wanted to be like a fill-in or a live drummer yeah. and just do all of that stuff. That was my hopes and dreams of a, mm. a younger Josh Ronquist before yes. everything got shattered. Literally, that's not just a pun, <laughs> but... Uh, <laughs> Oh, I see what you did there. Oh, yes. Not many listening will, but um, I'm glad you did. But yeah. um, no, I'm, I'm on the other side uh, doing interviews and reviews and stuff like that. And I got to talk to Bill for the North Tail albums. And um, yeah. I'm glad I got to. And now looking back on the second one, he was kind of dodgy about the future of North Tail. Mm -hmm. And it makes all it makes the sense, sense in the world now. Yeah, and, it does. you know, we lost a really good power metal band. We did. And that always sucks because there's not that many that have like a huge impression like like that and that is especially true. like you mentioned like two of them were in your top 10 yep like that so that's always gonna sting absolutely uh moving on uh we checked out nintendo direct this week uh so there were a handful of games that we enjoyed from this so, we'll so from well, before we get into it yeah. did you think it, it was overall positive or negative so i feel like we're a little bit of a skewed impression so we watched it after the fact not live yeah so we were able to kind of fast forward through things that we knew weren't our bag like anything anime or anything like that. So we skipped about at least half of it. Yeah. So I came out of it feeling positive, but had we watched the entire thing, I probably would have been a little bit more mixed, but definitely not negative because there were some good things. Oh, yeah. And uh, one big one we'll get to, but uh, yeah. well, especially for you, one big thing. Yes. Yes. So up first, there was a Nintendo World Championships NES edition, which will be coming out July 18th. So basically, this is kind of speed running through different challenges um, that put you head to head with other players and attempt to be the last one standing. Uh, uh, yeah, this is based on the original uh, Nintendo Championships from the late 80s where um, they would put like different levels of different games together and whoever can beat them the fastest you can win prizes and stuff like that. They would go mm -hmm. around America and, and do this and um, it's also kind of based on the movie The Wiz, if you've ever seen that. They also, okay. that's also where they showed off Super Mario 3 for the first time. Mm -hmm. I think they basically made that movie with Fred Savage just to show off Super Mario 3 <laughs> and also to have Steve I do some uh, guitar crossroads stuff going on there. But uh, I don't think you've ever seen that, have you? No, I haven't. Okay. Um, that'd be fun to watch for uh, all the uh, member berries that goes and tell yeah. all that of the time. But uh, I, th I think it's really cool that they're doing it. It won't be for everybody because it's not the full games. They're just doing levels of different games. Yeah. yeah. But I still think it's pretty cool. Yeah. I never played this back in the day. and I Well, most people didn't. Yeah. This was my first time hearing about it. Uh, but I think it looks fun like just taking certain levels from all the like mario games back then or whatever games just kind of rushing through like that's that's up my alley like i can beat people like stuff with stuff like that well now <laughs> we'll really see if you can beat people like that I know, I know and nintendo's been doing that for a while now i mean they had like a mario 35 tetris 99 f099 all that stuff where you know it's like a competing to be number one and now they're doing it here as well yeah so i think yeah. it's pretty cool um next up disney illusion island so this is already a game that's out and yes. i've heard this is of a it game before. that should be up your alley yeah i've heard of it before but i never really got you heard too many details or gotten it like actually played it or anything have you looked into it a little bit a little okay. bit um but a new mystery update is coming to it um and it launched on the same day that the nintendo um direct was so it's already out now but it definitely looks cute it's like disney characters and stuff so i i don't know i yeah, think it's, it's, be it's, fun. it's like a metroidvania yeah without any fighting yeah where mm -hmm. you're 
you're basically just exploring and puzzle solving and all that stuff. You can yeah. have up to four people playing at once. Yes. And it's got the old timey uh, Disney characters in yeah, there. Yeah. Like so. they don't look modernized. It's the old timey versions of it. Exactly. So I think it looks cute. So we'll see. Up next, one of my faves, Hello Kitty Island Adventure. Uh, this will be coming out next year. So this originally was only available on mobile, but it will be coming out not only on Switch, but PlayStation Xbox consoles as well. Um, it's basically a timed, uh, or it is a timed exclusive though. So Nintendo players will be the only ones be able, being able to access it at first. Um, but it's kind of just an Animal Crossing uh, New Horizons type game for Hello Kitty. Yeah. Um, are you going to get it? Uh, probably. Probably. It looks cute. My only concern is uh, it was originally a mobile game. Yeah. So mm. that implies that there will be some microtransactions yeah. that happens throughout it. Yeah. So that's something I want to kind of, you know, wait and see what all entails and stuff. But it looks interesting anyways. <laughs> it looks very cute. It and it does. looks very you. It does. It does. Up next, we have Donkey Kong Country Returns HD, which will be coming out supposedly on January 16th of next year. I love how you added supposedly in there. <laughs> of course, this was originally released on the Wii back in the day. But yeah, Donkey Kong. Yeah. Yeah, um, I know there's a lot of people that have been complaining about like all the remakes and remasters and all the stuff of the Nintendo stuff lately. Mm -hmm. I'm of the exact opposite since I've never played any of these games. Yeah, and yeah. they were they're not available to me unless I pick it up uh, uh, secondhand at a video game store and paying way more than what it's probably worth. <laughs> right. Um, I'm all for this, so I can actually go back and play these games that I missed out in the 21st century. So pff, on you. <laughs> I am a lapsed Nintendo fan, so getting to go back and mm -hmm. uh, check out all these Donkey Kong games and stuff like that that I missed for the Wii and the DS and all that stuff, yeah, bring it on. Yeah, like, I mean, I played some games back in the day because I had the original Nintendo and I had Atari back then, whatever, but, um... Well, I'm talking 21st century stuff. Oh, like Wii, yeah, I, yeah. I know I get that. You know, the GameCube, mm -hmm. Wii, Wii U. Yeah, um, I never had a Wii or anything like that, so I never got to play it either, but even for systems, I did get to play, like, if you don't like the remakes and don't play them pretty simple like but there's some of us out there who either want to play things for the first time or want to go back and play nicer versions of them yeah and that's not a bad thing not at all and it keeps those games alive exactly which they should be because they're a good game yeah <laughs> exactly um next uh funko fusion which will be coming out september 13th uh this is an action adventure game where you get to play as funko characters and it's all set in different kind of shows and movies based on the characters like jurassic park for example uh, it looks fun, though. It looks cute. Oh, there's so many different ones. Uh, yeah. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, yep. Back to the Future, Jurassic Park. Yep. Yeah, there's a lot of different stuff on here. Mm -hmm. Either this is going to be a nice celebration of all these different uh, IPs together at once, or it's going to be a dumpster fire burning <laughs> disaster. <laughs> that could be. Who knows? Because it feels like it just gives you a little taste of everything, but never enough to satisfy. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's Which true. is my concern about it. But mm -hmm. from looking about it, I mean, like, it looks very... Uh, unconsequential like yeah. it, it doesn't look like it's gonna hurt anybody it's no. not gonna affect anyone's lives in a negative way no not at all so you know just play it if it seems like it's an interest to you i mean it looks interesting it looks like it could be fun but just need to see a little bit more of what it's actually about yeah definitely uh up next luigi's mansion 2 hd will come out june 27 and a perfect example i've never played any of the luigi's mansion games I have and neither. i've always wanted to because it's luigi going into haunted houses and yeah, sucking up booze exactly i mean what that sounds amazing want? to me <laughs> exactly. i played a very crap version of louise luigi's mansion at dave and buster's one year oh yeah 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 where you can tell it wasn't really the game <laughs> it was just like it was kind of like a knockoff thing of it yeah yeah uh, despite still having the ip so i didn't really get a fair grasp of what it's all about but yeah i know the the three luigi's mansion games are out and it's all the more reason for me to want to go check it out if they're doing HD versions so it looks better on the Switch. Yeah, yeah, I haven't played Luigi's, Ma Luigi's Mansion either, but it, I've always thought it looks right out my alley because it's Mario characters, which I love Mario, but it's also brings in the horror, but in a cutesy way. 
and that's right up my alley. So I, I think it'd be fun. I think we might need to finally play this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I know Luigi's three was made on the switch, so I think that's available on there right now. I mean, I would rather yeah. wait for a sale because exactly. Nintendo rarely puts their first party games on sale. That is true. And, um, they're always, always full price. <laughs> yes, they so are. I would like, uh, I wish they did more sales and stuff. Like, no. and, you know, that's kind of the great thing for me at this period, because I can go back and play all the physical games that we already have that you mm -hmm. haven't touched yeah. because you only play Skyrim <laughs> and um, some of the digital games that we already have as well. Yeah. And by the time that I get done with all of those, the Switch games might be getting cheaper because probably the next, uh, the successor to the Switch will come out and all the Switch games will be eventually cheaper. Hopefully. And that'd be the time to play. That's why I'm, I'm very excited. I waited seven years, but I think it's going to pay off. Exactly. <laughs> Especially exactly. with how much money we could save on getting games. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Up next, so there was a Nintendo Switch Online update to the N64 and Game Boy Advance collections. Uh, this included adding the games The Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past Four Swords. Which you have on the DS. I do have that as one of the Legend of Zelda games I did play back in the day, and I will be playing that again at some point here. Um, Metroid Zero Mission. I did play a little bit of that, but um, I got caught in one spot and it was like, okay, I need to play something else. I understand. I understand. Uh, Turok Dinosaur Hunter. Yeah, um, this is like a big, I remember this back in the day, like on Nintendo 64 and uh, mm -hmm. uh, some other consoles as well. It's like a big old third or um, open world game where you're like a caveman, essentially, but smart enough to be able to know how to kill these gigantic dinosaurs that are coming <laughs> after you. The graphics are god awful because yeah. almost everything on the Nintendo 64 was. <laughs> but um, if you're looking for those bro kind of games where you just go and killing dinosaurs it's it's the game for you yeah i've heard that name before but i don't i've never played it or anything like that i never got to either but i am aware of them and i remember reading up on them and mm -hmm. things like uh, uh egm and stuff like that yeah and then finally most importantly and this <gasps> almost made you jump off the couch i it, it did it did perfect dark oh uh, if you don't know this was and it probably still is well we talked about it a lot last yeah. week but yeah um, it's for anyone who missed last week's show yeah um that was was my favorite game for the longest time. I mean, it's still up there, um, but I played this all the time on N64. I absolutely love this game, and I did try playing it on uh, Xbox last year, I think it was, but the controls were so messed up, like I just couldn't even do well, it. hold on. <laughs> hold on. Yes. I told you the workaround of this when I played a little bit of Perfect Dark. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, what the Metal Fairy is talking about is uh, the inverted sight, mm -hmm. where basically if you push up on the joystick, it go, uh, the sight goes down and vice versa. It, it's kind of like when you're flying an airplane. It does the same thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, that's not for everybody. Sometimes uh, when you press up, you want it to go up. Right. And there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> but there is a button you can just change on there or a, an option you can change on there and it'll go to those normal sights. Yeah, so it should be good when I play it on Switch. I did and try if you go back to the Xbox version as well, if they ever release a handheld and you want to play Perfect Dark on there. Okay, because I did try messing with the controls on the Xbox when I I played it and I couldn't get it to change but right but I don't think that you uh, chose that uh, button option because um, you you never heard of it when I told him about it a couple days ago yeah well I don't remember what all I tried but either way but I, the point is yes I, I think you know what to do now exactly exactly and also you should mention because you did not mention it mm -hmm. those last two games of Turok and Perfect Dark are now under the N64 <laughs> yes mature 17 plus section of their uh, expanded pack that's hilarious. Yeah, because uh, Nintendo needs to protect the kids. Yeah. And they just need yep. to put them there. They're, you're going to see so many animated boobies. You're going to see so <laughs> many deaths in here. You're going to see so many things that fragile eyes oh, shall never see. Exactly. And even if you're an adult and can't handle these things, remember, this is mature 17 plus. <laughs> and of course, the Metal Fairy and I are of families who could not have cared less <laughs> what kind of games that we played. No. Like, oh. I still remember, like, my mom had absolutely zero problem buying my brother and I Grand Theft Auto 3 yeah. back when that came out in the yeah. day. And, of course, stuff that came out before that. But I remember vividly getting that when my high school jazz band, not that I was in a jazz band outside of high school. I mean, the actual high school had a jazz band mm -hmm. and we would play Christmas songs at a mall 45 minutes away because that was the closest mall yeah. to, <laughs> to our town. And um, we went to the 
at GameStop and just bought it no problem. She couldn't have cared less. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I know your mom was the same way when it came to like horror movies and stuff like that. Oh, I remember renting Faces of Death when I was like maybe six years old, seven years old, somewhere in there. Yeah. Yeah. And that explains so much, doesn't it? It really does, (laughs) doesn't it? (laughs) Up next, one you're excited for, uh, Marvel vs. Capcom uh, Fighting Collection Arcade Classics, which will be coming out at some point this year. And that includes seven of the classic games. Yeah, it's all the Marvel vs. Capcom games. It's got the X-Men arcade games on there, the Punisher. Yes. You should be excited too, because we played a lot of these at our local barcade, Starcade. We did. Which is just one letter different from the WCW (laughs) pay-per-view. It's true. (laughs) Um, I don't know. I had a really good time playing against you. I did too. I'm excited. We could do that. Um, If you feel like playing against me, I think we should get the Switch version. Well, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, Otherwise, I might go with the PS4 version. But um, I'm a little upset at the price. It's 50 bucks. Yeah. 50 bucks for games that uh, are all in the early to late 90s. Yeah, that's crazy. (laughs) But these games have not been available to play for such a long time. That is true. On consoles. So like, as I I keep trying to justify to myself, it's like, well, I can either get the two one-up arcades, which I haven't wanted to get because of how expensive they are. That has all of these games featured, or I can pay the fifty bucks and play this on the Switch or the PS4 or whatever. Yeah, and the the bark or the arcade systems are what like seven hundred dollars each. Yeah, like so that. you know it'd be you with taxes and everything. Well, with taxes and everything, yeah. it'd probably be close to like sixteen, seventeen hundred. Yeah, so that or fifty dollars. And how big they are, and we yeah. live in a one bedroom apartment, so you know there's not really room to put them anywhere. And I love that you brought this up to me last night. You showed me the price of the game. I'm like, ooh, and you're like, well. I, you know, we could get the, the arcade systems instead. I'm like, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> But no, I'm going to have so much fun with those. Um, that's my favorite uh, fighting series, even more than Mortal mm. Kombat, yeah. which I know is a, a shock to people of my generation. Right, right. But um, I, I just loved all that stuff so, so much. And, and it's got the old X-Men ones, which I love so much. And uh, I never got to play the Punisher beat em up. And that looks like it's going to be really fun. Yeah, that looks cool. Up next, Super Mario Party Jamboree, which will be coming out October 17th. This includes new boards and tons of mini games. I think it's like over 120 mini games, if I remember it correctly. Yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot. But... Yeah. Um, instead of calling it like Mario Party 15 or 16 or whatever it is, they just mm-hmm. dropped the numbers and now they're calling it Jamboree. Yeah. Which it really is a Jamboree this time with it how is. much they got going on. <laughs> um, I'm not sure if you know this about our show. Uh, the Metal of Fairy and I are um, what you call um, uh, losers. Mm-hmm. So yeah. when we played the original Marty, Mario Party games, yeah. bef- well before we ever knew each other, yeah. we only played played single player because we had no yes. friends to invite over to play <laughs> yep. so we just played against the computer all the time so we have no idea what oh. it's actually like to play mario party the way that you should not a clue so this might be a fun one to actually play against each other yeah. and actually have that kind of fun even though no one else will join us that's true <laughs> But hey, one's better than none. Exactly, exactly. (laughs) Up next, we have The Legend of Zelda Echoes of Wisdom, which will be coming out September 26th. Now, this is huge for the Legend of Zelda folklore. Yeah, so this is the very first uh, version of the franchise where you actually get to play as Zelda. I know Zelda is not the guy who's been on all the previous games. That is Link. Zelda is the princess. Thank you for pointing that out, because I know there's people out there who's you think well haven't you been playing as zelda the whole time no no um basically uh she's going on an adventure when link vanishes and she needs to step in and save the day yeah uh, it's the uh i don't need no man version of uh the legend of zelda, zelda gets her groove back yes <laughs> <laughs> and it's got that really cutesy style of um yeah. uh there was a remake w- which we have and mm-hmm. i'm gonna play it yes i forget which um zelda one it is but it has the yeah. same animation style and everything it's like over top but it's like 3d animation yep um it's got that really cutesy art style but i think it looks pretty cool i do too and i love that it's a, a girl you get to play as finally what you know? doesn't kill me makes, makes me stronger, stronger. <laughs> 
<laughs> yes. <laughs> and finally, I'm really excited for this, Tales of the Shire, a Lord of the Rings game, which will be coming out this holiday season. Basically, you get to live as a hobbit in the Tales of Shire. Um, it's like a little life sim where you get to, you know, have a house and cook and live your life among the hobbits. And I am so excited for that because that is me. Now, uh, two important questions I did ask. Okay. Will you be able to get potatoes? <laughs> <laughs> and can you have second breakfast? I mean, I would hope so. I would hope so, too. I mean, they, they have to include both. I mean, yeah. it, it would just feel like it's left out. But um, yes. if you're still a little bit confused about that, it's kind of just like the Hello Kitty game that we talked about earlier. Kind of. Like, it's the life sim kind of thing. Uh, Animal Crossing, Stardew Valley, that kind of yep. stuff. And also that uh, Blumhouse game that's coming out that seems like it's like Stardew Valley or Animal Crossing, but mm. horror-esque. Yeah. Uh, that looks like it might be up your alley as well, too. Mm. But, um, yeah, I'd say overall, I'm just really happy with the Nintendo Direct. Me too. Uh, there's a lot of stuff I'm excited for. And get to save about two grand instead of having to buy the one-up <laughs> arcades it's to true. legally be able to play those games. Yeah. And now I can just pay 50 bucks and legally own those games. Yeah. And I kind of want to pick up the physical version of that so I just don't have to deal with anything else. But uh, we'll, mm -hmm. we'll see. We'll see what happens. But um, what would you say about Summer Games Fest overall from, like, the original Summer Games Fest opening night? Uh, PlayStation, Xbox, which like, do you think it's going to be a good year going forward for games? I think so. I mean, I, I think the original Summer Games Fest thing that we watched, that one was a disappointment for me. Completely lackluster. Uh, but when we got... And they spent like five minutes on a mobile game, like yeah. a big old five minute commercial that just looked unbearable. Yeah, but I think the Xbox and the Switch showcases won me over. Like, there was good stuff on both, so I'm excited. Yeah, Sony really let me down. Yeah. Although some of the games are coming to Sony from Xbox and Nintendo and other stuff as that well. That is true, yeah. But yeah, everything that's supposedly coming up with Xbox and Nintendo has me very, very excited. Yeah. And wouldn't you know it, we are already at the halfway mark of the show. We are. Uh, so we only got two more segments left. Um, of course, uh, the first one being Accountability 101. Yeah. This is your first time tuning in. No, we're not holding these bands accountable for things that they've done in the past or anything <laughs> stupid like that. This is holding the Metal Fairy accountable because throughout our 11 year relationship, there's been so many bands that she says that she's going to check out. I've showed her songs. I've shown her albums. We've gone and saw, seen some of these bands live. We have. We and have. she always says that she's going to go check them out. And then she never does. So <laughs> this is Accountability 101 for the Metal Fairy, yeah. who every week I'm having her check out stuff that she said that she was going to check out at one point in time. This one might be an exception because I don't think she's ever said that she was gonna <laughs> check this one out. No, but I'm still not. I'm still holding out hope until she crushes my dreams when she describes all of these songs. <laughs> <laughs> when I hope that she might like the one of, if not the heaviest album from Porcupine Tree, In Absentia, which uh, came back, uh, which came out back when I was in, uh, what year was it? 2002. 2002. So I was just on the cusp of being in high school when this came out. And I was in college. Uh, Steven, <laughs> Steven Wilson was working with Michael Akerfeld and Opeth doing uh, Blackwater Park and then, of course, doing uh, Damnation and Deliverance after that, uh, doing the production and some guest vocals and all that kind of stuff, doing the Mellotron, all of that kind of stuff. And of course, Stephen Wilson was very inspired by Opeth, and throughout this album, you hear some Opeth-esque riffs, and it starts off that way as well, too. But uh, we'll be getting into that. Uh, Porcupine Tree has gone through many phases. Uh, they started off as more of like a psychedelic, very Pink Floyd-y, overly long songs. I'm not talking <laughs> like Dark Side of the Moon stuff, where that was supposed to be commercial. I'm talking about like 40-minute drone psychedelic songs like a uh, moon loop <laughs> did and moon loop too then they started into the more kind of alternative rock pop rock era of albums like stupid dream and light bulb sun but then came in absentia which is where most of the pro community started to discover porcupine tree because they started getting heavier and this is more of the very very dark progressive metal stuff now of course that's a relative term because you know some of the things on here are quite light mm -hmm. but they are showing the heavier sides and then you hear it through this you hear it through dead wing fear of a blank planet and of course all the album after that uh they broke they now they're backtracking saying they didn't break up they just didn't put anything out for like 15 years <laughs> 
course. But then they came back with a return album, which might be the last thing that they do. But this was the, my era of Porcupine Tree. Basically, everything from, uh, I can't remember if Lightbulb Sun or Stupid Dream came out first, but those two albums, all the way to The Incident, is my era of Porcupine Tree. Everything before it, too psychedelic for me. Uh, the album that came out a couple of years ago was not my bag. So this is right in my wheelhouse. And I'm just hoping and praying and pleading there's something that you like about this because you've seen Stephen Wilson twice uh, mm -hmm. seen him solo once uh, we saw him at the fine line mm -hmm. uh, that was the first time I got sick with my stomach issues back yeah. in 2013 and then uh, of course in August 2013 uh, I thought I was gonna die and I uh, dealt with uh, stuff for about eight to nine months yeah so you know that kind of put a little bit of a, a thing on oh. the whole experience mm -hmm. and then a couple years later we saw him at the varsity theater uh, Jordan Rudis was apparently in the house although he didn't uh, go up on stage or play or anything he was yeah. just visiting steven yep. uh we got to see him i said hi to him that was pretty cool mm -hmm. i've actually said hi to jordan rudis a couple times like when i interviewed mike mangini in person jordan was right there and i waved at him and said hi i got to do it there yeah and that was pretty cool for me <laughs> but uh yes i'm stalling because i don't want to hear the inevitable but maybe i could be proven wrong uh you check this out while i was sleeping this morning while you were I working did i did which you've always told me you can't work on stuff like this while you're you're doing your real work so i'm uh, very puzzled how were you able to do this it depends like if it's quiet in here like it was nice and quiet because you were sleeping and i was working on some kind of reporting stuff so it was kind of easy to listen and do stuff at the same time so yeah okay mm -hmm. or if you're watching some of those training videos that uh, i know you were falling asleep towards oh it was boring it was yeah boring. <laughs> maybe you could have put on pork pond tree during that yeah. or maybe that would have made you sleep more i don't yeah. know yeah I'm very interested in what you're going to say. I know All Media Reviews is very interested in <laughs> what you think is going to happen here. Oh. So, yes, no more stalling. Let's see what you actually thought of the 2002 classic progressive metal album In Absentia by Porcupine Tree. Well, buckle up, Buttercup. The first song, uh, Blackest Ties, was fine. It was very 90s KS95, like easy rock. No, no, it starts off with an old path riff. What are you talking Talking about but the song i mean even if it starts off with a riff doesn't mean the song is like that it's in throughout the song it's they use the riff throughout the song as well this is what i got from it dear uh, also you're gonna have to explain ks95 because not everyone's from the twin cities area yeah so if you're from, not from the twin cities area it, it's changed now it changed it well, now it's like 90s 2000s and today yeah but back in the day it was like it's like the the very people friendly popular music so like anyone I'm who knows porcupine tree they j just listen to this and just roll your eyes so like back in the 90s i didn't really listen to it but in passing you'd come across it i remember them playing like the friends theme all the time stuff well, like they're that. from minnesota the right. ones who made that okay I, I don't know but like that kind of stuff like that just very easy generic kind of rock yes um she has compared uh porcupine tree to the Friends theme and also <laughs> bands that did like Walking on Sunshine. Uh, just let that sink in if you're a Porcupine Tree fan. Uh, just, just let that sink in. Yeah. Number two, Trains. This is the one song I did recognize. I do think this one has really catchy vocal melodies and I always sing along to it when you play it. So No, you don't. Yeah, I do. <laughs> I've never heard you do that. I hum along to it. I absolutely do. Uh, so I don't mind that one. That's pretty good. Uh, number three, Lips of Ashes. I found this one to be a little too psychedelic and very, let's get high and be profound. The insanity. Look on his face. The look in on his face. Insanity. Uh, the fourth song, The Sound of Muzak. This was catchier. Uh, the lyrics, while they're true, I found them to be a little pretentious, but... How dare you call Stephen Wilson, of all people, pretentious? Yeah, how Okay, dare that's I? a joke for everybody. We all know he's pretentious. <laughs> he is pretentious. <laughs> um, number five, Gravity Eyelids. Uh, this one was, it was better. Like, I, I like the heavier moments, especially. They were really nice. Um, the sixth song, Wedding Nails. Instrumental, um, heavier. I, I, I like this one i like this one i've never heard you say that you like a, a heavy instrumental i know i know right? it's weird yeah. um number seven prodigal uh it's fine um but i didn't feel like the easygoing music fit the somber lyrics i felt like there was kind of a clash between the two uh number eight ridiculous <laughs> number eight point three it was okay uh mellow but deep lyrics very short um but it was okay it was okay uh number nine the creator has a masterpiece Master tape. 
Oh, master tape. My apologies. Um, it was a bit too experimental for me. Oh, I'm not surprised about that at all. Yeah. <laughs> uh, number ten, heart attack and a layby. This was sad. Yeah. Uh, like it was sad. I I liked it in a. Like I said I my my phrase I put down was I like it in a sad way. <laughs> like like if I need a a song to like kind of bring out those sad emotions, you know, this would be a good song to listen to. Yeah. It, it's it's a it's a it's a hard one. Um, number eleven, strip of the soul. <sighs> What'd you call it? Strip the soul? Uh, it sounded like you said strip of the soul. No. <laughs> um, what I what I said was, what is this? <laughs> like, the lyrics were kind of confusing and pretentious, and the music, again, was very, like, 90s don't care. Yeah. You know how there were some, like, 90s... I'm not saying the music was grunge of this, but, like, kind of grunge, like, attitude of don't really care kind of thing. That's the vibe I got from this music. Ridiculous. And finally, uh, number 12, Collapse the Light into Earth. Um, it, Again, very sad, very tear-inducing. Yeah, uh, this is the song that you heard in the past that made you cry. Yep, I thought so. I thought so. Like, uh, very simple piano and strings, but it was very pretty, and, and I, I like this one. I like this one. So it wasn't a complete wash. There was, there no, was a couple like, moments. Def, like, I definitely prefer either the, like, way kind of slower, simplistic, sad, sad songs or, like, some of the heavier moments. But there's a lot of, like, the in-between mid-tempo rocky kind of stuff or the psychedelic um pretentious stuff i no i hate pretentiousness <laughs> is there any other artists in the in the world of music that you listen to that you consider yeah. pretentious oh i'm sure there is do you think ingva is pretentious um, I think he has a huge ego. I, I wouldn't necessarily say pretentious, though, because, I mean, like, I don't think his lyrics are pretentious, you know? They're, I don't know. Well, it's not, it's not about the lyrics. It's about, like, uh, what you create. Well, I, I find the lyrics for Porcupine Tree pretentious. A lot of them. Not all of them, but all okay. of them, yeah. So would you ever check out another Porcupine Tree album? Um, I don't know if I'd sit down with an entire album, but if you knew songs that you think would like, I would like based off of some of the songs I liked off this one, I'd check out songs. And that's also why I think maybe I should have showed you Fear of a Blank Planet because that is usually considered their heaviest album. Mm, okay. Um, there's also a 17 minute long song in there so that's also <laughs> why I, a deterrent. I, it was a deterrent. <laughs> yeah. But I also think um, that kind of combines like uh, the heaviest moments and it's also got some of those uh, light simple piano moments yeah. in there as well. Um, maybe I should have went with that one and um, you know if we ever do a round two of Porcupine Tree that'll be the album I have you yeah. check out but um, again, I'm happy it wasn't a complete wash, yeah. which I was really, really afraid it was going to be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what do you think, folks? And especially all media reviews, what do you think of the Metal Fairies uh, reinterpretation of In Absentia <laughs> in review form? Do you like this album? Do you not like this album? Do you agree with her? Do you disagree with her? <laughs> Is there any songs that could change the Metal Fairies' opinion on Stephen Wilson and company? Please let us know in the comments down below. And of course, I'm doing all of this as I am shuffling away to add some new material for the Spin the Wheel choice. All right. Of all the Accountability 101 bands on here, uh, I gotta update some bands on here, I realize now, but I think between the ones that we have on here, I think we could have a pretty good one next week. Okay. So let's get into it spinning the wheel spinning spinning around and oh yes i'm excited about this one okay uh yeah i'm gonna have you check out antimatter okay uh, of course uh this is uh spearheaded by mick moss a uh, very very distinct doom voice uh of course he was uh a, a major part of uh sacred cargo the uh, lone album from mmxx or 2020 however you want to pronounce it uh but of course his main band antimatter has been doing doing uh, doom rock, gothic rock, alternative kind of stuff for quite a long time. And I I am kind of a lapsed fan of mm -hmm. Antimatter because it, it took Sacred Cargo for me to really appreciate what Mick Moss has done. And I've gone back and checked out everything. And I really love everything that they've done in that time. But I'm going to make this very, very easy on you. And I'm going to have you check out their latest album, A Profusion of Thought, okay. which came out in 2020. This has the Doom stuff. It has a lot of gothic elements, uh, some more alternative stuff as well, some instrumentation 
instrumentation you may not appreciate, and I think you know the <laughs> instrument of choice that I'm talking about. <sighs> but I think there's more than enough moments on this album I think that you would actually thoroughly enjoy. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, anyone listening to this, are you familiar with Antimatter? Um, do you want to go check them out after the way I just described them now? All that good stuff, let us know in the comments down below as we get ready for our next segment. And finally here, we wrap up the final two segments of the show, which we pretty much combined together because it's all about new music. Some of it's some brand new singles, which we'll be talking about first. And we'll be closing out with Out Today and What I Missed. We are recording this on Friday, June 21st, so this is technically accurate. Mm-hmm. Where we got 11 new albums that we'll be talking about, eight that I that came out this week today, and three that I missed along the way. So let's get into those precious Hawk 2 inspired singles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so up first, we checked out Winter Filleth with Dishonor Enthroned. Yeah, this is, um, it seems like it's more simple Ask Winter Filleth. Like, it's kind of more streamlined, straight ahead black metal. Um, some of their previous albums have been a little more symphonic in sound, uh, a lot more ebb and flow going on. This is a little more straight ahead, but I thoroughly love it, and I think it's going to be one of my favorite black metal albums of the year, if the rest of the album sounds anything like this. Yeah, I really liked it too i've I've only casually really listened to them in the past Um, Uh, another band i should add to the wheel yeah yeah but i i really like the sound of uh they got going on here i i (laughs) this is gonna sound cheesy you're probably gonna make fun of me but i like that they're called winter filleth and they have like that wintry cold sound about them (laughs) oh yeah that that is almost all of what their stuff is about yeah so i i enjoyed it i enjoyed it yeah i i've interviewed uh, the singer guitarist in the band how many times and you still never checked him (laughs) This is why Add Accountability 101 exists. Add it to this the is list. exactly why. <laughs> Uh, up next, we checked out Oceans of Slumber with Poem of Ecstasy. It feels like Oceans of Slumber is trying to be sexy. Yes, 100%. I mean, with the first video being very BDSM bondage inspired. Yeah. And in this one, she is just like moving and dancing. Like the it's only true. thing missing is a pole. <laughs> basically um oh i'm not used to that from oceans of slumber i'm not saying it's a bad direction i'm just saying that's not what brought me to the oceans of slumber dance right right like um i jumped on when they were the more doom extreme progressive metal side yeah and every single album sounds different from another like one is very close to funeral doom one is more goth rock one is more southern gothic almost dark pop Mm -hmm. The, the previous album was that and now it seems like they're really going into the sexy slash extreme metal side on this album yeah and also their band members change every time it's always it's always just dauber and uh beverly each time you know um it's always the two of them Mm -hmm. and i'm so curious to hear the rest of the album because i can't quite put my finger on what they're going for with the singles i need to hear the album what about you yeah, um, I mean, this is another band that I haven't, like, fully gotten into, um, but I, I've always thought she has a really great voice, though. I forget her name. What was her name? <laughs> Cami Beverly. Yes. Um, um I, yes, uh, Dauber and, and Cami are married now. Okay. Uh, they met because of the band, and then they got married. Oh, that's cool. Uh, but yeah, I've always thought Cami has an amazing voice, but yeah, to your point, it, it seems like she's kind of trying to make a point of being, like, this seductress type personality in this song anyways. Um, seductress or succubus? Well, hey. Because could, she could be the devil. They do go hand in hand. They do. But yeah, I mean, I, I it's it wasn't a bad song by any stretch, but it, yeah, I was just kind of confused what they were going for. Yeah, I need to hear the album in context. It's Oceans of Slumber is kind of that band, too. Like, you can appreciate the singles. Yeah. But you need to hear the whole album to understand everything that's going on. Totally. And maybe that sounds pretentious to some people. (laughs) But to me, that makes me more intrigued to check it out. Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> up next, we checked out the new song from Cemetery Skyline, The Coldest Heart. Still waiting on that uh, album announcement. Right, um, right. They've put out the three songs so far. They say the album's coming out this year, but there's no release date. If it comes out this year, it will be my favorite album of 2024. If for some reason it comes out next year, it'll probably be my favorite album of 2025. Yeah, yeah. I thoroughly love this song, too. Um, Just excited to hear the full album, and I love what they're doing. And I love how all three songs sound different, but they still all capture the goth rock sound. Yeah, 100%. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it just, it, it's kind of like a variety pack of goth rock. 
and I appreciate that. It is, yeah. I know some people might be turned off with that, but to me, it's like, ooh, I get this kind and this kind and this kind, and it all fits together somehow. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, I'm very excited. <laughs> and I I reached out for an interview. I got that. It said no, but uh, maybe later. I don't know. Yeah, if they're listening, hey. Hey. <laughs> um, next up, we listen to Insefarum with Winter Storm Vigilantes. Now, this was a change. This was a change. Uh, how about you describe it better? Yeah, I think you so, can describe this better. Yeah, so it's like Insafarum said, hey, we've been folk metal all this time, and we're still going to keep that folk metal, but we're going to try to make a power metal album under this this guise of folk metal. Because, <laughs> I mean, they still have a lot of the same elements that they've had before, but it, they have a clean singer who was, what does he play in the band? Does he play the uh, instrument? He does band? keyboards. Keyboards in the band, um, who has apparently been in the band for a while now, but um, he's doing clean vocals on it, which I've never heard clean vocals clean power metal vocals with a insafarum song before and they have a lot more kind of kind of galloping kind of power metal sound to them too which they had some of that before but yeah yeah it's like they've become a power folk band rather than yeah. just a folk melodeath band yeah mm, definitely and i think it works yeah um it does. it's a uh, shock to the system if you haven't checked out insafarum in a while that is true and of course they haven't put out an album in a while i didn't even realize so much of the lineup has changed since the last album yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I know Sammy's been doing a bunch of other stuff. I've interviewed him a couple times for uh, other stuff that he's been doing outside of Insafirum. Mm-hmm. And um, now, seeing what they're doing now, it is quite shocking. But mm-hmm. I think it's a really positive thing. And um, mm-hmm. they're kind of doing a route to remain kind of thing here, in my humble civil opinion. No, they're not becoming a mellow death <laughs> electronic band. When I say that, like, the meaning of reroute to remain, it you know, it's like it's changing the direction to keep the band going. Yeah. And I felt like Insafirum needed a bit of a change. Yeah. I and I just didn't know how. Yeah. But mm. they found the way to make the change. And I think it's one that some people are really going to hate, but yeah. others are really going to love. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, I, I loved it too. Like, it's it's a shift, but I like it. <laughs> Up next, Anders Manga. We checked out his single, Leave My Grave Open. Yes. Um, He keeps putting out singles rather than EPs or albums, which is disappointing to me because I wish he'd put these all out as an album I know. so I can cover it yeah. because I just don't have the time to do EPs and singles and stuff like right. that Yeah. because I really want to promote this more but all of that said every time that he puts out a new single it's some of the best music that I've heard yes. <laughs> like he, I mean Bloody Hammers focuses much more on the heavy metal gothic and punk mm. kind of stuff depending on the album that you listen to Yeah. Uh, whereas uh, Anders solo stuff is much more of the uh, gothic synthwave 80s Mm. horror sound Mm -hmm. and no one really does it like him no like he really knows how to be able to add the right synth sounds and uh i'm assuming drum machine and of course his vocal style just fits so perfectly with it this one is layered in 80s and i think i think it just fits so perfectly (laughs) for what he's going for yeah i absolutely love everything he does and this is just another example of perfection like you said very well you say you love everything he does but you won't listen to the first few bloody hammers albums I haven't sat down with the full albums. No, I've listened to pieces, but... um. All right, well, another thing I gotta add to the wheel. See, this is a never-ending thing for Accountability 101. Never-ending. It, n- it will never end because there's so many bands. That's uh... <laughs> Up next, uh, Zeal and Ardor with Fend You Off. Had this been the first single, I don't think I would have been nearly as scared about this album. Mm-hmm. Um, the very first single was like the softest uh, thing Zeal and Ardor has put out with vocals. Um, yeah. If you listen to some of the instrumentation on Devil Is Fine, it's like very lullaby-esque kind of instrumentals they got throughout that album. Um, yeah, the first single is like the softest thing they put out. The second song is the most experimental thing that they've done. Like it, it would, it would make Mike Patton, uh, uh, you know, it, it would make him get rosy cheeked listening yes. to it. <laughs> he, he would just be a little flustered with all the experimentation that's going on with it. <laughs> this one is mo- the most straight ahead so far. Like it's reminiscent of something off of like the self-titled uh, maybe be even Stranger Fruit. It's it's more straight ahead, which I appreciate for this style. And much like I talked about with Oceans of Slumber, it makes me want to check out the full album because between all three singles, I have no idea where the album is going. Right. It shows like there's no clear direction so far between the three singles. Yeah. So I want to hear how this goes. Yeah, totally. What about you? Yeah, I definitely like this song significantly better than the last single. <laughs> like this one is definitely more up the alley of what I 
enjoy from Zeal and Ardor. And like you said, had I heard this one first, I might have been a little bit more optimistic going into the other ones. Um, the video for it, again, was like one shot the entire time, which was a little... But that's also the other two things. So there's a theme yeah, going on There here. is, there is, there is. Um, but yeah, I'm curious to hear what that entire album will sound like because it's like multiple different styles going on right now. So, how, you know, how far do they go? <laughs> well, they've always been considered an experimental band. They're really pushing the limits of that label here. Yeah, that's um, true. I'm kind of afraid they might be going a little too Boris for you at yeah. some point where it's like it's too off the wall and wacky. Yeah, that would be that last song that came out. Yeah, <laughs> and I just don't want that to happen because I know how much you enjoyed the at least the first two albums. Yeah. Mm. And I don't want you to lose that magic. I know. But um, we'll yeah. see what happens when the album actually drops. Exactly. And finally, we checked out Dark Tranquility, Not Nothing. Yeah, this is classic Dark Tranquility in 2024. Yes. Um, mm-hmm. it's It's got that Misery's Crown kind of feel behind it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, his clean vocals, which um, you never thought he would be in a band like Cemetery Skyline, where he showed off all of his clean vocals in that kind of dark gothic kind of feel. Yeah. But then you also remember, hey, kids, he was the original singer of Hammerfall. <laughs> never forget. Never forget. But um, it, yeah, between his growls and his clean vocals and just that slower to mid-tempo ballady, dark tranquility feel, mm-hmm. this is that song. Yeah. And I think this album's going to rank pretty freaking high for you in your uh, uh, top albums of the year, will it not? Yeah, I love, love the song. It's very much the dark tranquility that I love. Michael Stone, I just can't do any wrong this year. <laughs> Or most years, I should say. Well, I've never heard him go wrong ever. Yeah, that's true. That is true. I mean, we never heard this the Hammerfall when he was in it, but... Well, there's got to be a demo out there I'm somewhere. I'm sure there is. That'd be like, hilarious if, to hear. If I ever went out to Sweden and I hung out with Hammerfall, maybe Oscar has like a demo tape of Stane <laughs> doing some classic stuff. Oh, that'd be great. That um, would be great. But yeah, I love this one. Yeah, and um, that's all the new singles that we checked out. Um, and of course, that is very much the Metal Fairy's wheelhouse. She is not an album girl whatsoever usually no. like she has to be in love with the band to usually check out a full album and that's also what disappoints me is because i love talking about full albums and well maybe i need to start a second show and get some people who like talking about albums and <laughs> just do something like that yeah, yeah maybe that could happen in the future i'm kind of putting out feelers for that right now if anyone's listening because <laughs> <laughs> i don't want to just do that myself and uh, the metal fairy does not want to do something like that so yeah let's but that said we're gonna check out some more songs here in out today and what i missed for june 21st 2024 um this was a wacky week for me because i had everything lined up and this week they decided hey we're gonna move this album back a month hey we're gonna move this album (laughs) back a week Oof. ruining everything that I did. So, right. um, I originally had 13 for this. I had to drop it down to 12. Then I had to drop it down to 11. Yes. Ugh. But then I heard one last album that'll be at the very end where it's like, well, I don't want to wait till next week for this one. So I added it back in. And uh, yeah, we got 11 albums here, starting with the sixth album from Alcest, which I cannot pronounce. Um, do you want to try? Uh, here, let, let me make it bigger. There oh, you go. Oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, Le Chante Le Mort. Le Roar? Le Roar? I don't know. All right, try it. Try it one more time. Where you, where you say it all? <laughs> Le Chante Le Roar. All right. Um, that's what happens when you are a lapsed French speaker from high school. <laughs> um, to me, this is the second lightest album the band has done so far. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not Shelter, which is easily the lightest. There's no black metal in that whatsoever. This one has just black metal elements in... It's used as an accent on this album. It's not the forefront like it has been in other albums. Much like a few weeks ago when we talked about Alcest and uh, showed you one of the darker albums that they put out. Um, if you're into post-rock, if you're into a little almost proggier moments, um, I think there's something to enjoy here. I know a lot of people have wanted to like Alcest, but they're really turned off by the black metal elements. This is the album that you should probably check out. Mm. But what about you? Um, I like the vocals. I found it to be very people friendly, like driving down the country road with your iced tea and a straw hat. Listen to music. That's right. Uh, she just compared Alcest to John frickin Denver. <laughs> Yes, maybe on the next release, all sets will cover country roads. And maybe, maybe. All in French. We hope. What's the matter with you? <laughs> A lot. 
Uh, next up, we're going to Milwaukee here with Ancient Entities in their debut album, Echoes of Annihilation. This is a tech death band that really scales back on the tech elements. Don't get me wrong, there's a lot of tech death on this album, but it's not just fretboard Olympics. It's not just blast beats 100% of the time. They know how to throw in death metal riffs on top of all of that. And if you're looking for something that's heavy, but not to the fullest extreme, this is an album to check out. But of course, there's some people in this very apartment that are not into this at all. Yeah, I mean, the music was kind of eh, and the vocals were just too guttural for me. You are wrong. But maybe I can win you over with this next one. Another debut album from a, a, a duo known as Knights and their debut album, Revenant. This is a concept album of a priest getting turned into a vampire against his will and basically uh, forging a story of uh, trying to, uh, how you would say, unalive the vampires that did this to him. Sure. And I can already tell by the concept of this, this is right up your alley. Um, <laughs> it's got that really dark, evil, religious overtones to it, but it sounds very much of the uh, melodic death metal, gothic metal, and death and roll, black and roll style. So the way I kind of describe it is like Insomnia meets Paradise Lost meets Tribulation. Yeah. And I think that's a winning combination for you, right? It is. I, I like this one. Very catchy, like very dark but it had some nice clean vocals over it too yeah good mix yeah i thought so as well uh this is one uh the, next up this is one that i've had in the canon for a month until i saw that they uh, changed the album release of this one it is codex mortis with tales of woe uh this is very much of the death metal variety here um i really enjoy what's going on here it's on the more heavy brutal side and if that's your bag i think you should check this one out but of course again this is not everyone's bag is it no, it's not. It was too harsh, too guttural for me. Uh, next up, we have the band Derelict, and also uh, the uh, fashion design uh, made by uh, uh, in Zoolander. <laughs> Derelict! Uh, with their album Versus Entropy. Now, I really dug this one as well. I think there's some good heavy moments going on here. Just the right amount of uh, darker stuff going on as well. Um, what did you think of this one? There were some catchy music parts, but then there were some other uh, parts of the music and the vocals um, I found to be too bro tough guy. <sighs> I'm just a disappointment to him. No, 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 you're not a disappointment. But, you know, this is probably what's going to make more people tune in. Yeah. Because with certain bands and styles and everything, mm -hmm. we have the exact opposite reactions to it. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And people love a good debate or fight. So that is true. That's basically what the show is going to be coming into. Come when, at we get, me. when we get into year two, yes. um, it's probably going to be much more fighting. Gloves off. Uh, next up um, is an early contender for Black Metal Album of the Year, in my humblest of opinion from Kavin and their album The Formless Fires. This is everything I love about black metal. It feels orchestrated and symphonic without necessarily going into the orchestral routes. It just mm -hmm. it feels like it's really deep, rich compositions with very stylized black metal. Um, whether it's more of the cleaner vocals, whether it's the straight ahead black metal, everything is comprehensible and it just feels very grandiose and that's mm -hmm. my kind of black metal. But what about you? Yeah, I thought this was super catchy like it's black metal but it kind of had some uh heavy metal elements to it as well it was just a good mix yeah fantastic stuff and and speaking of a band that almost kind of does the same thing but uh, very differently uh more of like a, the 80s sound going in there is the band portrait with the host uh this is the very first concept album from this band with this also being their sixth album um it's like new wave of british heavy metal swedish heavy metal and that merciful fate king diamond love throughout all of it so it's kind of like that proto black metal on top of all of it. Yeah. I love this album. What about you? Yeah, I thought it was catchy. It was like evil heavy metal. <laughs> Fantastic way to be able to describe it. Uh, next up, um, I think this one's going to rank pretty high up for you. Um, I, I wasn't aware that you were really familiar with the band until this, but um, maybe I just completely spaced it out. Yeah. It is the brand new uh, third album from Seven Spires with a fortress called Home. Uh, this album deals heavily with uh, everything that's happened with the pandemic. Mm -hmm. uh, apparently, uh, Adrian Crone of Seven Spires had uh, a, a few breakdowns during the pandemic. Uh, she 
he hasn't gotten into detail about what they are, but uh, as someone who goes through breakdowns pretty regularly, I can kind of imagine. Oh, yeah. Um, this is easily the darkest, most thought-provoking album that they've put out to date. They focus even more on the black metal side of what they do. Like, you're hearing a lot of Dim You and Cradle of Filth on this one, mm -hmm. mixed in with their more symphonic power metal side as well. I think it's a match made in unholy hell. <laughs> like, mixing the black metal and power metal together. I wish more bands would do that. Yeah. But what about you? Yeah, I really like this one too. Super catchy. Like, again, kind of evil heavy metal mixed with black and symphonic and just kind of a mix of everything. That's good. <laughs> I gotta stop the show for a second. I just got a spam text from a number. Okay. Um, I just have to read this on here because this okay. is so great. Okay. Will you support Donald Trump for president this November? Select A for yes, B for no, stop equals end. <laughs> All right. Why are you going to respond? Well, I, I I really can't say the words that I want to say. Sure, sure. But uh, E-S-N-D is, uh, D-I-E is what I would respond okay, back if I sure, could. Sure, yeah. Um, but uh, it's spam, so if I reply back, it's probably going to make my phone even worse than it is now. That is true. That Wait, is and true. I'm already having enough problems with my phones. I'm not getting notifications. I know. Anything meta-related, I have to, like, restart my phone to be able to get notifications. Yeah. It, it's just a giant mess and mm -hmm. we're gonna just have to go to Verizon at some point and get yeah. a new phone despite me not wanting to. Right. Play into obsolescence everybody. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but I also think that was a good way to be able to segue things because those were all the albums that came out today and these mm -hmm. last three I've missed along the way. Yeah. And starting off with those albums is the brand new album from Crip Sermon, which I've been waiting for all year with their brand new album, The Stagian Rose. This is the perfect doom metal album, a horror metal and classic heavy metal album. Uh, the vocals aren't nearly as high pitched on this album. It has more kind of like a candle mass feel now. Um, I saw one of my friends on Facebook compare the uh, previous albums, uh, the vocals having a Chester Bennington feel behind it, which I don't <laughs> really agree with. <laughs> But um, I can see how the change has happened here, where it's much lower and deeper, but still kind of high-pitched. And, of course, the music is just that classic heavy metal, classic doom, everything that I love about that style. Uh, yeah, this is going to be one of my highest-ranking doom metal albums of 2024. What about you? Yeah, I I know in the past I, I didn't really like them, but I, I enjoyed this. Like, it's doomy, but it's like a heavy, dark, heavy metal, too. Um, I really like the cover of the album, too. It's very, like, dark fairy tale <laughs> oh if you look at all their album covers they all have this kind of feel behind it yeah so i, I need to give them more of a chance yep and they are going on the wheel okay. they are going on the wheel all right uh next up is we are going to uh hungary for this one uh it is uh from the band Din dinumbra with finality and if you're familiar with the word finality you might have an idea of what this band kind of sounds like <laughs> Uh, it is very much of that melodic gothic doom metal of like a Woods of Ypres. And they also do their own kind of spices and variety with this as well. It is a dark, somber album. And I love it so very, very much. But what about you? Uh, yeah, I liked it. Like, I really like the vocals. The, he's a very, very powerful voice. Um, and from what kind of like Woods of Ypres. Kind of like Woods of Ypres. And, and from what I could make out, I, the lyrics were super deep too, obviously. So I, I enjoy that as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Fantastic stuff. And finally, ending things with an album that when I was writing up my album reviews and trying to figure out, well, I guess I'm just going to have 10 this week. Uh, <laughs> I came across this album and my jaw pretty much hit the floor. Uh, this is the third album from Fall Warden with Legend. Uh, this is a side project of The Warden from the UK black metal band Fen, which I did not know until after I wrote up my review. Um, this is the atmospheric black metal style, but it sounds good in the production. <laughs> it doesn't sound like it was recorded on Fisher Price material. Like he actually knows how to record guitar. He knows how to record drums. Yeah. All these things. Everything sounds spectacular, a little bit raw, but it sounds spectacular. And my favorite thing about all of it is the songwriting. It, it's like Agalock meets Winterfelleth. And that is just a winning combination to me. And I've only got to hear this album a couple times, but I had to put it on the list this week. And it, the more that I listen to it, the more that I'm falling in love with it. And I think it's going to rank pretty high in my top 100 come the end of the year. What about you? Yeah, I thought it was catchy. Like another one that was kind of a mix of heavy metal and black metal. So lots of bands doing that kind of theme this week. <laughs> yeah, uh, there's a lot of debuts, one man bands, um, third albums. I mean, every week seems to have like kind of a theme to it, even if it's on a intentional but uh yeah with that 
I have covered way too much music this year. <laughs> uh, I'm currently at 255 albums that I've reviewed That's this insane. year. insane. Yeah. And while I know I'm not someone who can listen to brand new music 24-7 and giving every single album the proper 10 or 15 spins before I review it, I do pay attention every time that I listen to an album. I know what I'm looking for at this point after 13 years of reviewing albums the way that I do. Yeah. Uh, whether it's for interviews, whether it's just doing my top 100, whatever. I know what I'm looking for, so I don't need to spend nearly as much time listening to music over and over and over again. So you're saying you know a thing or two about music because you've listened to it so much? Yes, (laughs) but I'm also trying to spend a little less time with it as well, too, because I don't want to ever get burnt out on it. But that's also the great thing about new music is there's constantly too much stuff that no one out there can listen to all the time. Mm -hmm. And I can only cover a small fraction of that but yeah. i still think with 255 albums this year i think i'm still doing pretty good i would agree and the running list that i have of all the albums for 2024 one song apiece is at almost 22 hours it's a lot so pretty <laughs> soon it'll be 24 hours so you can just listen to this list and hear a different band yeah. making a different album from 2024 alone mm-hmm. for a full day <laughs> and you won't hear the same thing twice oh it's true which is utter insanity it is it is and in speaking of utter insanity thank you so much for checking out episode 50 (laughs) of the heavy debriefings podcast we are two episodes away from our one year anniversary um do you want to talk about what we're doing for that show or should we keep it a secret let's let's share it let's share it yeah let's see what we're doing here is since music is such a big topic of the show and stuff um we have decided we are going to each do a top 10 list of bands that the other one of us (laughs) uh either completely introduced to us or like really open our eyes to yes and i know this is shocking hold on to your hats folks the metal fairy has shown me music over the years it's crazy that I, I was either not familiar with or never checked out yeah and of course i show you way too much music every single week <laughs> that's brand new and stuff and i'm amazed you're still here yes because of that but uh, thankfully you still are and uh, you know 50 episodes in you haven't wanted to quit the show yet which uh, still boggles my mind yeah, yeah. but uh yeah this is the end of the show thank you so much for sticking around next week will be episode 51 and of course we'll be uh, checking out the latest album from antimatter back in 2022 i'm sure we'll have some news and new singles and all that good stuff that'll happen then and of course the the june roundup as well too because that uh, that friday will be the last week of new releases for june 2024 and of course uh on youtube and in written form i'll be showing off uh, all the albums that i covered in june 2024 yeah so until until then, check out the outro of the show to check out everywhere we are on social media and all that good stuff. But until then, for the Metal Fairy, this is Josh Ronquist for the Heavy Debriefings Podcast saying, embrace the skullet. This has been the Heavy Debriefings Podcast. Thank you for tuning in. Make sure to follow Heavy Debriefings on all your favorite social media sites. Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and threads. And of course, heavydebriefings.weebly.com for all of your Heavy Debriefings needs. Also check out the Metal Fairy at Facebook.com at the Metal F-A-E-R-I-E. Until next time.